Hello everyone, I hope all is well. Welcome in for my ninth shave of Christmas. And on the ninth shave of Christmas, wet shaving gave to me nine pipes of smoking. To be more specific, we have Santa's pipe from Siliski Soaps. And I'm gonna follow that up with the Captain Splash from Tiki Bar Soaps. And with the Balm from Siliski Soaps, it's also Santa's pipe. And then a little pre-shave slash beard oil uh, from Siliski Soaps. This is also the Santa's pipe. And I don't think you can find this one anymore. I'll be using this brush I purchased uh, from Grizzly Bay Brushes. I purchased this when I went to the 2019 Dirty South Shavers meetup. So this is a Grizzly Bay brush with a tuxedo knot, so synthetic. And I'll be using the Parker 26C uh, open cone, which I used recently. And this has got a Voskhod blade in it uh, on the second. Uh, use. Uh, while I do the shave, I'm also going to give a non-spoiler review of the Rise of Skywalker. And I uh, promise to not get into uh, any spoilers. I'll stay really, really generic during the shave. And then after the post-shave, I will, I will not get into spoilers, but I'll get a little more specific about some things in, in my review. So if you want to go in completely, completely cold, you can just listen to what I say during the shave. But if you want to hear a little bit more detail about things, maybe how to prepare yourself going in, then maybe listen afterwards. But again, I promise not to spoil any uh, major plot points. So let's wet the brush here. I'm going to load off of the tub. I did a whole video in my Christmas and July promotion about uh, Santa's pipe. This is one of my favorite scents in wet shaving. So I'm excited about doing the shave. This is a uh, honey tobacco scent. I fell in love with the scent on this soap the moment I smelled it. As I said in my Christmas in July video, I actually found the fragrance oil that you used uh, in this soap because Siliski Soaps is nice enough to list where they get their fragrance oils and it's from a company called uh, Sweet Cakes. If I'm not mistaken, I'll put it in the link uh, descriptions below. I've got the brush loaded. I dip the tips just a little bit. I'm going here and get our lather started. Okay, I'm gonna spread the bottom of this a little bit, get a little more water in there. See what we can make this do. Getting a little fluffier and increasing in volume. Probably can see the peaks that are forming there on my goatee. I'm overdue for a little bit of a goatee trim. Big chunk of soap. Sometimes with softer soap, you'll get a big chunk in your brush when you load off the tub. So I'm just going to set that aside. It's still a little pasty in places. I'm gonna go with just a little bit more water to see what we get here. Okay, let's get into this first pass with the grain with the Parker 26C with the Voskhod blade. I'm gonna try to lock in this aperture based on the uh, with the uh, 
lather as reference so we're not blown out on the video. Maybe that'll stay locked in throughout the shave. <clears throat> okay, so um, I really enjoyed, messed a little place here with the lather. I really enjoyed the Rise of Skywalker film. And my daughter, who's a big Star Wars fan, did as well. Let me say this before I get much more into my general review. You know, yes, you want uh, fans to be pleased with the films you make. And the critics, because they have an important influence. But ultimately, no star, uh, story, no story of plot lines or narrative belong to us as individuals. I can understand when people get upset that certain characters do things that I think are out of character, not in line with uh, that person's character, the, at least the character as they have it fixed in their mind, which is why some people didn't care for The Last Jedi because they felt like the Luke Skywalker character was acting in a way that was not in keeping with his original character. I also think it's sort of become a cool thing to do, if you will. To hate on things. To be able to critique something. And while making videos about shaving and watching people shave is a rather weird genre, or I'll just put it this way, an unusual and niche, very specific been called the long tail uh, genre of YouTube video. There's entire uh, YouTube channels that, that are seemingly uh, dedicated to just um, hating on Star Wars. Ultimately, a film comes down to did you enjoy it? And honestly, reviews can, you know, help you decide whether you want to go see certain films. I mean, that's how I use, like, Rotten Tomatoes. Is, uh, if it's a film I'm, you know, not sure if I want to see, we do that often in my house. If we're going to rent a movie or uh, decide which one to watch, we'll look at the ratings. But I will say, I pay more attention to viewer ratings than I do professional critic ratings. And uh, for right or wrong, and I'm not sure how I feel about the comment I'm about to make, but a lot of the reviewers that you see on YouTube are people who've gone to film school. And if you think about it, like when you go to school, part of what you're learning to do is to be critical, and I don't mean that in a negative way, but you're, you're, you're taught to analyze uh, whatever discipline you're in, craft you're in, is to analyze it, break it down, see how things could be improved or things you like, things you didn't like. But, you know, a lot of people, I think, have continued that on into analyzing film, which they should in a certain vein. But when your audience is primarily fans that are interested in a particular fandom, you know, sure, you're free to express your opinion and you should, but I think a lot of people have just, maybe they've not made it in the film industry and so they're just kind of um, you know, they have a podcast or, or, or a YouTube channel, which is great. That's awesome. I love a lot of these, like 
Um, well, I won't name any specific channels, but just to say that I think a lot of people, you know, are still trying to think like a director would because maybe they went to film school to be a director, uh, but they, they're not directing films. Uh, maybe they've directed a few small films or they've done some commercials, but um, they, they wear their critical director's hat when they're reviewing these movies, and that's completely fine. There's a, there's a place and a time for that. But just keep in mind that that's, not, that's a different worldview than looking at it through just a casual viewer or even a dedicated fan who just wants to enjoy the story. Uh, I'm going to cross the green here on the second pass. I really like this film. Now, I've only seen it once. It just had its public release last night. We went to a 6 p.m. showing. And interestingly, there were, there were seats. Um, interestingly enough, there were seats empty in the theater. And I had purposely not looked at any reviews or listened to any information about it. In fact, my daughter and I were very intentional after the last final official trailer. We didn't watch any of the TV spots, which was hard, like particularly when I was watching uh, NFL football. There would frequently be... Um, TV spots that would come on and I'd have to turn the volume down and kind of turn my head away and not watch the TV spots because we want to go in as cold as possible um, on this. I'm trying to line the goatee up a little bit. I've gotten a little too close over here in the last few shaves. So I'm just trying to even it up on this side. Got a nick there. It's that area that's been bothering me for a little while. Got some new irritation down here. All right. I'm going to take some of this off of the goatee and kind of put it on the face just so I can see a little better what I'm working with here on the goatee. But I really enjoyed the film. Um, this film is a roller coaster ride from the beginning. Um, it moves around a lot. The, the plot moves rather fast. I don't... Uh, remember a point in the film where I felt like there was a lull. It's kind of funny, so I was intentional to try not to drink much of my drink I had uh, in the theater, my Coke, uh, because I didn't want to have to get up and run and use the restroom. Uh, those of you who are watching this probably for the wet shaving uh, may be like myself, maybe middle-aged, and you know that our bladder capacity gets a bit shorter as we reach uh, this point in life. So, sure enough, about 30 minutes in, I was like, ah, I need to run to the restroom. But I was thinking, okay, when, when, can I hold this to the end or do I need it? But I was uncomfortable. But um, there was one point in the film where <clears throat> everybody's kind of regrouping and are about to sort of start the third act of the film. I could kind of feel that, and I thought, okay, this is a good time. So I was ran, probably gone, I was probably gone like two minutes, and it ended up being a good place to, to go. But that was like probably an hour and a half or hour and 45 minutes into the film. That, that Before then, it was a straight roller coaster, and I couldn't figure out a good time to like go. So, all right, we're gonna go against the grain on this third pass.
Shifting gears here real quick, just to remind you, I just love this scent. And uh, the performance on this soap is great. Great primary and residual slickness. And I have several tubs of soap, as I know many of you do. Uh, but this is one of the ones that's has the, I would say the one of the lowest levels. It's probably the second lowest level. I bought uh, Sangre de Drago from Phoenix early on, and uh, you can see the bottom of the container with it. And this is the one that's probably the second most used. So. I'm going to be doing a uh, end of the year, um, I think I'm going to call it like if I could only keep five, <laughs> if I could only keep five shave soaps. Because if I did 10, it would just be too much of a compilation of my fall and winter and spring summer videos. Okay, as I often do for the uh, last pass, I'm gonna squeeze out what lather we have here in the brush and kind of feel for areas where I need to pick up. But yeah, it's a it's a roller coaster ride from the beginning, and I loved every moment of it. Um, are there like a couple small decisions in it I would have changed? Like maybe the way, of, uh, like a certain line. Uh, yes, but plot points, I don't think I would have changed a thing. Um, and I think that J.J. Abrams and the, the other writer, I'm forgetting his name, who uh, worked on it, um, I think did a really good job of tying in Last Jedi and the previous movies and the whole uh, series of uh, the eight previous movies within the Skywalker uh, saga. There is a lot of fan service in this film, and a lot of people say that uh, in a negative way. And what they usually mean by fan service is, and what I mean by fan service as well, is it's a callback to uh, particular points from previous movies that the fandom have often talked about and would like to see addressed. And there, there's several of those in there that everybody's been always hoping that this would be, you know, that certain things would be addressed in certain films. And there's a lot of those that have never been addressed that were addressed in this film. It also raises some new questions as well, but uh, it answers a lot of things uh, also. Okay, so here we're doing the pickup pass going across the grain in the other direction. Because I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be shaving uh, more frequently over the next couple of days in this uh, 12 shaves of Christmas rather than waiting three or four days to be doing one every couple of days. Uh, I'm going to be real light on this pickup pass and not try to chase that BBS. Let me see what I got here. You know, I notice you have to be careful when you're filling for pickups that you're not pushing in on the skin because that's gonna pop the hairs out and you're gonna feel them. Uh, and you don't really wanna cut those because when you let go, they're gonna go below the surface and, it, and it, while you'll have a closer shave, it also increases the likelihood you'll have ingrown hairs. I do feel some right there, a little bit right there. I think that's, I think that's, uh, got it. All right, let me uh, 
rinse off and we'll get into the post shave. Okay, as expected, the Slisky soaps performed great. Good post shave feel. Do have a little irritation down here. I'm gonna chalk a little of that up to uh, <laughs> trying to do a movie review while shaving. Uh, I didn't mention this in the uh, pre-shave, but I'm actually going to bring in a little witch hazel product here, uh, particularly because I have the irritation. This is uh, Texas on Fire from Sterling Soap Company. It's their witch hazel and aloe splash, and back when I did, I forget which number it was, but back when I did the uh, Chieftain Shave Soap from Through the Fire Pine Craft, I think I used this in that shave because it's a smoky soap. Uh, I like using this splash, I'm sorry, this witch hazel and aloe splash, not alcohol splash, when I'm using a tobacco scented product because it puts a little bit of that smokiness in a tobacco, uh, but also the witch hazel should help to ease a little bit of this irritation. Okay, let's uh, get into the Captain's Aftershave from Tiki Bar Soaps. This is a bit of a sweeter tobacco. Um, the Siliski Soaps uh, Santa's Pipe is a little bit more of a honeyed, dark honeyed tobacco. This is a little lighter. Get a little menthol in there touch of sweetness, but definitely get the tobacco as well. Really nice splash. And Slisky doesn't make an alcohol-based splash. Um, they originally had what they called this uh, post-shave, um, moisturizing post-shave, which is a completely made of um, uh, oils. They had uh, hemp oil, sunflower oil, argan oil, jojoba, or jojoba oil, uh, the essential oils, it says, and then vitamin E. But this would also have fragrance oil because I, I know that there's a fragrance oil they use and uh, they just haven't listed it on here. But um, So this is completely made of oils. So I don't think you can find this anymore. Um, this reminds me a little bit of the uh, aftershaves that you get from... Katie's Bubbles, and speaking of tobaccos, this is Connecticut Shade, another tobacco scent. This actually has alcohol in it, uh, but it has that same same bottle size, same delimiter on it, where it comes out kind of slow. Uh, I'll use this in a second as a uh, beard oil, or to be more specific, a uh, goatee oil here in a bit after I use the balm. But this used to be the only post-shave product that they had, and I don't even think they make this one anymore. I'm not entirely sure why they, they don't. Um, so I'm going to use the Slisky Soap Santa's Pipe Balm. Now, this balm is really, um, I guess, thick or <laughs> really solid, so it probably has a higher butter concentration than a uh, oil concentration. So squeeze out some there. Smells exactly like the soap, and, and I guess something about the base of the balm versus the soap. This retains a little bit more of that tonka bean scent. Tonka bean gives, it's my understanding at least from reading about fragrances, that it gives a bit more of, like it gives like a, the smell of hay, like hay in a barn. Um, so it's kind of an earthy, it's got an earthy sweetness to it which I think really helps in a tobacco scented soap because it gives you that earthiness that you would get from cured tobacco. But you also get that honey in this. This is really nice. I like this balm quite a bit and I think it's because of the high higher butter content. I got a little too much on the hands. I put a little here on the elbows and inside of the Crease the elbow there, places that tend to get dry in the winter. This is that, uh, again, that oil that I don't, the post shave oil, I don't think you can get anymore, but I bought the fragrance oil so I can make my own if I want to. So I'm going to put this into the goatee. So, yeah, overall, uh, I really, really enjoyed the um, Rise of Skywalker film. I hope you do too, if you're a Star Wars fan, and if you don't, you don't, and that's, you know, that's an individual opinion, very highly subjective, obviously. Um, 
So, yeah, thanks for watching this ninth shave of Christmas. And again, on the ninth shave of Christmas, what shaving gave to me nine pipes of smoking, more specifically, Santa's pipe from Siliski Soaps. Now, stick around after this if you want to hear a little bit more of my non spoiler review, but I'll get a little bit more into how you might prepare yourself for the film and get a little bit more specific without revealing any major uh, plot points. But uh, if you're only here for the wet shaving, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the 10th shave of Christmas. Bye. Okay, so um, one thing that I would advise you to do is there's a point in the movie, this won't shock you, this happens a lot in Star Wars movies, and particularly in this new trilogy uh, since Force Awakens, Last Jedi, there's a point in the film where you're gonna hear a lot of voices but not see faces. And so for that reason, I would encourage you, like when the credits start to roll, I mean, you'll know, obviously, at what point in the film you've heard the voices, but you may not be able to identify who all the voices are. Uh, there was a scene like that in The uh, the Force Awakens. It was kind of a dream sequence where he had similar kind of thing here. Um, but what I'm the reason I'm saying this is you want to watch sort of early on in the credits to see all of the characters slash actors that are listed for those voices so that you kind of... Uh, can confirm who you thought you heard, might have heard, that kind of thing. There's also great, if you search for voices in uh, The Rise of Skywalker, you can find some pages that'll give you a list of those actors and, and the, the, the characters they portrayed that you hear in the voices. But that's something I wish I'd caught when it was right, starting to roll, just caught the tail end of it. Um, so, as I said, this is a roller coaster ride from the beginning. There are even plot points that you think would unfold later in the movie that are in the crawl, which kind of uh, took me by surprise. But uh, it kind of sets up a little bit of the narrative and the plot uh, in the in the crawl, as the crawls often do. But this one, I think, went a little deeper than I thought it would, and that's because I think this movie was trying to cover so much ground. And that's one of the things, you know, I would say to the critics that to be, you know, in fairness, this film had to wrap up, in, you know, eight films prior to it. And so it had to kind of move fast. It, the plot had to move really, really fast. And the film had to move fast. And so there was a lot to make up. So they, they did a lot of that with a crawl, right, to get you to where you, you need to be. As I said, there's tons of fan service moments. Um, I uh, cheered in this film. I laughed. I teared up a bit. Um, there, there are just great moments uh, in this film. And I really, 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 really enjoyed it. The uh, way that they have used existing footage of Princess Leia, Carrie Fisher, to me was seamless. Um, it didn't take me out of the film at all. I mean, there were, like at the very beginning, I sort of looked at it and thought, oh, what, how good of a job do they do integrating this? And after that, I just forgot it. And it was just, you know, her, her character. Uh, she has a powerful moment uh, in the film. The, the acting in this film is probably the best I've seen in a Star Wars movie. Uh, Adam Driver and... Daisy Ridley, in particular, deliver great performances. Uh, there's, you know, um, characters you hope to see will appear in this film. That's kind of all I'll say about that. Um, there's, uh, as I said, like things that fans have always hoped for, Star Wars fans, that, that actually get fulfilled in this film. And again, I won't be any more specific about that. Um, but I'll try to do, I'll probably do that in the 10th shave of Christmas, or maybe I'll save it for the 11th or something. But I'll talk more about, like, a, do a spoiler review of the film. But anyway, I really, really enjoyed it. In fact, when I left the film, I put on Facebook, perfect. And it was for me. It was perfect. It hit a lot of the points. Now, as I start to, like, retroactively analyze it, there's a few things I might have done a little different, but not really. And uh, so I'll talk more about that when we get into a sport, more of a spoiler review. But uh, again, thanks for watching this ninth shave of Christmas with uh, Slisky Soap Santa's Pipe. And uh, for you Star Wars fans, I hope you enjoyed just hearing a few of my thoughts about, about the film. And I look forward to talking to you a little bit more about that in detail when I can do a bit more of a spoiler uh, film. So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.